So, hey guys, it's been quite a while since I've done a video, and specifically a video on a build. I've done lots of live streams and videos on this build we're going to do today in particular, and also a lot of people have built this build of mine because a lot of people enjoy it. I'll probably pop some of those up on the screen right now. I asked in my Discord for people to share images of their builds. But we're going to be building the Scotto Frog today, which originally was a single-handed keyboard with ZMK and a nice nano for wireless, but I also kind of converted it into a single-handed gaming macro pad, or just a macro pad in general because it does support Vile if you wanted to do that. But I've used mine personally for gaming for like a year and a half now i've really enjoyed it but with the addition of that machine back there which i did do a video on that was my last video on my channel on the carvera air i'm able to make some like more premium things now so today we're going to make a more premium scotto frog with some metal and some wood I think it will look pretty cool. So we're gonna jump in and we'll get started. So before we hop in the video, I did wanna give a shout out to today's sponsor. And you might notice that we're in front of like a waterfall because I figured I'd do this outside because it's like really nice out. So we're doing that. But today's sponsor is Next PCB, And I did work with them before in the past, specifically on the Scotto Wing PCB. So if you bought one of those from me, that was actually manufactured by them. And I don't believe I actually use this feature that they have, but they do offer matte black solder mask, which is something a lot of manufacturers don't. And they have that. So that's something that you might wanna check out on there. But they do also offer really robust sourcing for parts which is another major selling point of them you can basically source your mouser lcsc and a bunch of other manufacturers if you need to get specific parts somewhere where a lot of the manufacturers don't have those so that's really nice you kind of source that but the really major thing they offer is their dfm tool or design for manufacturing tool which is kind of another layer on top of the normal pcb manufacturing process where normally you run say drc inside of kicad it'll tell you roughly if it's okay to manufacture but this is another layer on that where we'll kind of check more specific things such as like solder bridging so if you have traces too close you can kind of get a solder pool in between those and it'll kind of check for that and the great thing about this is that they actually don't charge for this so you don't have to necessarily use next pcb for this but it does also link directly into their pcb tools so it's kind of like really nice on there but with that there'll be a link in the description where there'll be like a coupon code probably i don't know if they're going to give me one but the frizz it'll be down there and other than that check them out i do highly recommend them because their quality is probably some of the best i've ever seen in the pcb world that i've ever gotten and with that we'll get back into the video so here is what i am calling the premium scotto frog which is kind of funny i'm calling that because you'll see in a minute that i'm not actually using really all that premium materials other than this here so if i put this down and grab the plate we just have a piece of 6061 aluminum here it is one and a half millimeters thick i did mill that out on the machine i think it took like an hour to do this one really nice it's an aluminum plate but you can see we have these stabilizers in here which are like the cheapest ones i could find on aliexpress i've had them for a while so i figured i would use them in something they feel pretty good they don't bind or anything which sometimes you do run into issues with binding on cheaper stabilizers they feel pretty good but that's the plate there and then this is the main feature which is the yellow pine case which i think looks really really good here i do of course have my standoffs in the bottom that is the recession of course for the pro micro which we'll talk about in a second here we have our rubber feet on the back we have our screws in there and then up top you can kind of see this blemish mark here because i did have a collision on this um like i mentioned in my last video on the cnc machine sometimes with cnc you make mistakes that was one of the mistakes there and then i also just kind of made the hole really big here because i couldn't get the alignment right kept messing up on it so i just did that and kind of saved this part to not have to remake it but i actually take this and put it down here and then i grab my pro micro over here this is just an rp2040 pro micro you see that slots in perfectly right there and if we look up top you can see how that usb port is kind of perfect right there so that's the case in the plate which is the main premium part of this and the reason i say that is if i actually grab over here right now these switches i'll show what they are on the screen here in a moment because they are just some really cheap ones i got on amazon but you can see they're like these yellow ones they are a linear switch i believe they're ajaz brand i think but they feel pretty good and i think they'll be nice in this build i did originally buy these two to kind of franken switch them i bought these switches and some green ones for my sprite scotto wing build which I'll link the live stream there. So I'm gonna use these as my switches here. And what I'm gonna do now is just go through, I'm gonna pop those into the board and then we can start soldering. So there are all these switches in the plate here. They were a little bit hard to kind of get in in certain spots because it's just kind of how it is with these metal plates. You have to use a different bit to get these corner radiuses. And sometimes that causes issues with CNC, but other than that, they kind of went in perfectly. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna come over here. I'm gonna grab some of this copper wire here. This is 16 gauge copper wire. I'm gonna straighten that up. And then I'm gonna just start by doing all the columns, which are the vertical ones here. Then I'll be back after where you can talk about the diodes. We'll wire it up and we'll have a functioning board. So there are all the columns wired up. As you can see, we have them nice and kind of soldered on there. And now the next part, of course, is to do diodes. So I do have over here a bunch of little diodes that I pre-coiled, of course, 
right here you can see they're pre-coiled and I used for this my diode coiling tool so if I grab over here this is a tool that I sell on my website I'll link down below if you want to buy one or you can just build it yourself with the files um they're on the repo if you want to do that but yeah just a little diode coiling tool makes them rounded off like that I'm going to go through I'm going to do the rows next so I'm going to go through and heat shrink those insulate them do all that then we can wire it up to the controller and then it'll basically be done so I'm going to go through and do the rows now So there's the matrix all wired up. As you can see, we have all our diodes running to the rows nice and neatly there. We do this like weird thing on the bottom here, which I could have probably wired this a little bit differently. Everyone always asks me this with the Scott of Frog is why don't I kind of like wire this into this column here? So like that, it just makes it easier if I wire this as a seventh column instead of just a five column. But with that, what I want to mention at this point that I kind of sometimes lack to mention is that the files for this are available for free in the description. If you want to build it yourself, you can 3D print this or CNC it. And then also the other thing too, is that I don't ever really mention that on my website, there's really nice like diagrams and stuff that can kind of help you wire everything I'm gonna actually reference my own diagram here to know where I've got to wire everything on the controller because all the pins have certain spots to go and then the firmware can work with that so I'm gonna go through now I'm gonna wire everything on here to the controller over here which is yet again a RP2040 Pro Micro, you can see that is an RP2040 right there. I love this controller. They're super affordable on like AliExpress. I used to sell them on my website, but tariff thing right now is kind of causing problems there. But these are really nice. They're USB-C. They have like 16 megabytes of flash. Overkill controller, basically. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go through. I'm gonna wire everything to the controller and I'll be back after that. So here it is all wired up to the controller there. And the only thing I actually have to do at this point, and I'm just gonna do it off camera. So I have to actually take the firmware for the controller here. I have to just recompile it for the RP2040 because as it is right now, it's for the 32U4 Pro Micro. It doesn't actually work with this one. It's very simple to change it in QMK. It'll take me like five minutes. But I'm just gonna do that after I finish recording all this video and then I'll have the proper firmware on it. But what I have to do at this point now actually is take this. I'm gonna grab my case here. I'm gonna mount it to those five standoffs there. And then I will put the keycaps on afterwards, which these are the keycaps here these are my scotto cap scoop yet again they're 3d printed in this nice black filament in the repo if you want to download and print those yourself they're pretty simple to print and they work really really nice i always say whenever i mention these two that they're probably the best thing i ever designed because i can basically get keycaps in any style or color i need which is awesome i'm just going to go through and i'm going to assemble into the case now and then we'll have a completed board So yeah, there's the completed build right there. I think it looks really nice with the keycaps here and then the yellow pine, which does have some polishing paste on it because it was over on my polishing desk over there and I got that on there. I didn't bother to clean it off, so it's just kind of on there now. But it looks really nice with the yellow pine, the aluminum plate, of course. You can kind of hear what that sounds like. I obviously can't do like a typing test on it because it's not a keyboard, but the aluminum plate does do some weight to it, makes it sound kind of nice. And you can see it kind of sparkles through there, which is cool. But if we flip it over, you can see we have the nice grain on the back. We have our little rubber feet there. And then of course the cut on up top that you can see a wire in there. This is the only thing I'm kind of still working on with the CNC figuring out is how to get this better aligned so I don't have like that issue there, but it's fine for now. It looks fine. You can see the texture of the plate there also. But other than that, that's kind of the board. If I put it down, this is how I'm going to use it, of course. WASMD there, and then I have my space here to kind of jump around. And that's really all I got today. I don't have much else to say here. This was a pretty short video. I just wanted to kind of do a build because it's been a while since I've done it on my channel. I hope you guys did enjoy this. Yet again, all the files for this are available for free down below if you want to build it yourself. There is, of course, my Discord if you want help in there. Just kind of chat with people about keyboards, so that will be down there too. But until next time, I do have some pretty cool builds coming out here soon. Kind of jumping back into I've been working on a lot of different projects recently. But we're going to jump back into some more builds here in the next coming months. And with that, I don't have anything else to say here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.